everyone. Today we're going to be creating an artwork by combining all three line, shape, and color. This artwork is going to be uploaded onto your Artsonia online portfolio. If you haven't already signed up for Artsonia, I'll be sending home a uh, slip of paper that has your code and how you can access um, artworks. I've been uploading them since you were in kindergarten so there sh if you haven't signed up you should still have artwork on there it's just how you have to give permission um, to to view it so if you would like to do that with this artwork that would be great if you are at home I will send you a message with your code and you can upload pictures um, and it doesn't have to be just this artwork it can be pictures from any time I have ordered from past years in art Sonia um, some different items from my own children. So one year we decided that we wanted to do pot holders for our family. So my son drew a cupcake and my daughter drew a cupcake. And then we gave these out to family members for Christmas with each of their artwork on them. Um, I also have the butterfly that my daughter drew when she was in first grade in 2006. And then the butterfly that my son drew when he was in, uh, first grade from 2014 so I have this matching set of mugs with both of my children's artwork on them so I always try to do the same artwork for each grade level every year but if you have something specific in mind you can also upload whatever artworks you would like it doesn't just have to be the artworks that we make in art class or even the artworks that we make specifically for Art Sonia. It can be any artwork that you would like to have placed on an item that you can keep forever or give as a gift. Okay, we're going to be drawing a floral still life. I wanted to give you a little sneak peek at my setup here and this is what I'm going to be looking at. So a still life is something that's in real life but that holds still, that won't move. And um, if I were to leave this vase and these flowers here for the next 10 years, if I came back, they would still be there. They wouldn't walk away. So still life, something in real life that will stay there. So to make the vase, and if you've never drawn a vase before, I'm gonna show you a super easy way using parentheses which parentheses are the little things that look like this that you might have a math problem in or that might have a word inside of them, but they're kind of like an elongated C and that's what we're going to use today. So, and, and everyone's vase is going to look different. There are hundreds of different kinds of vases and so you don't have to have draw your vase exactly like mine. But what I'm going to do is try to find about half the bottom half of the paper. So we wanna have our flowers to fill up the top part. If we make our vase too big, we end up having uh, not enough room for our flowers. We wanna make sure that we have lots of space so our flowers are the main focus. And for the vase, so about halfway down, I'm gonna draw two parentheses, okay? But I'm going to draw them back to back. So they're kind of facing the opposite way. And if you want your top of your vase to be wider, you would draw it farther away. All right, so hold on, <laughs> let me get my scrap paper back out here again. So if I draw my parenthesis here and here, this is a skinnier neck. If I draw one here and then all the way over here, this will be a wider neck because we're gonna attach it like this. And again, I'll show you these steps in a second, but there's lots of different ways to draw it. Okay, so I'm going to make mine kind of thinner. And again, if it's not perfectly symmetrical, totally fine. Don't worry about it. Um, you don't have to draw with a marker. If you want to draw with a pencil first, also fine. You can draw with a crayon, colored pencil, either way. All right, so my back-to-back -back parentheses. Now I'm going to make my forward parentheses, but bigger. That's more like letter C. And then bigger on this side. And again, okay if they're not the same. I'm going to connect it down here. So I'm a little bit off so I'm just going to try to find a way to connect it but again it's okay if it's not perfect. Just practice and then up here I'm going to use a curved almost like a smile line right here. Okay 
and we got to draw the table. We don't want to draw the table on the very bottom because then it almost makes it look like the vase is sitting on the edge, which can cause some tension in your artwork. It might feel like it's about to fall off. So we're going to go about halfway up our vase and we're going to draw a line from the left side of the vase over to the left side of the paper and then from the right side of the vase to the right edge of the paper. Okay, and that's it. That's your vase. You can add designs to it. I'll show you if you want to make it a clear vase. I can show you that later. Um, but for right now, we're just going to leave this like it is. Oh, but we are going to write. So down here beside your vase, so not at the very bottom, but beside the vase, I'd like you to write your first name, just your first name. Don't include your last name and the year. So this year is 2020. So your first name and 2020. All right, up here. We're going to start with a few circles. So I'm going to draw some bigger circles. Maybe an oval. And another circle up here. So we're going to try some overlapping when we are creating our um, flowers. I'm going to start with this little one first. And to make the petals a really easy way to make a petal, if you've never drawn a flower before, is to use the letter you and you can even turn your paper you 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 and just keep going around try not to make your flowers too small or they will be hard to color in right and again the petals don't have to be symmetrical most flowers in nature their petals are moving they are not perfect they are folding they're, they're not perfectly symmetrical. Now I have this big one up here. So this time let's do a more rounded, almost like a letter C shape. Okay, almost looks like an ear. And then let's do the same thing on this side. Now, when you get to right here, we wanna make this flower in front of this one. So when I go to draw my petal on this one, I'm gonna pick it up wherever I touch that black line and then continue it on the other side. And the same thing if it goes off the edge of the paper. Just pick up your marker and then continue it. Hmm. Maybe I'll add a few little, little half circles here. And we can add designs inside of these two. If you wanted to add a little dotted texture in here. Sometimes I like to do a little This looks like a little grid, but I like the way that it looks. Okay, and then the same over here. Um, there's one that I like to make that kind of looks like a sunflower and it goes up, in, up, up, in, up. And so I just repeat that all the way around. And if you're not sure, if you really like it, now you, can, you don't have to do this type of flower. I'm just going to show you different petals that you can draw and you can use them if you'd like and if not you don't have to use them. If you want to find a piece of scrap paper to practice on before you draw on your paper you can do that as well. Okay. I'm just trying to even it out here. See how I bumped into that one, but I picked it up off of the page. And then maybe I'll do a little spiral in the middle of this one. Okay, for this one here, I want to make it look like it's going down. I'm going to try to make this one look a little more three-dimensional here. If you notice, I haven't drawn any stems yet. We're going to wait for our stems. Now, I have other space I need to fill in. So one thing you can draw is a rose. And you can do that two ways. The easiest way is just to start with a little oval. And then around that, draw a second one. So almost like an uh, oval bullseye. Like that. And then underneath, draw the letter U. And then you can even add a little line here to show the petals. Okay. And you can also just draw a little spiral line that's an oval and add a new shape for that. 
Okay, and then I like to fill in, sometimes I just do these little tiny flowers to fill in the space. You can also add some leaves to it coming off. All right, if you look at this one here. Oh, close up. But there's lots of leaves that are coming off towards the outside. So you can add some leaves to fill in that space to kind of make it look even. See, this is the perfect space right here to add a leaf. And sometimes you can even add little circles to fill in the space. They might look like little flower buds. I'm gonna put one more leaf. This time it's gonna overlap. There. So I've filled in my paper. I'm gonna start coloring in a minute, but I wanted to show you some other options for flowers that you can draw in case you need to fill in some more space. A really easy one is this sort of wavy line and you just loop it around and make it connect and then you make a bigger one a bigger one and that way you can make it as big or as small as you would like <coughs> you can also make Um, but I just wanted to show you that one. Oh, you can do, instead of making lots of smaller curves, you can make larger ones, make larger flowers like that. But there's, I mean, there's so many ways that you can add your flowers. You can make it look however you want. If there's flowers that you know how to draw that you love, you can add them on there. But the most important part for this is that you have the space filled in. Now, I don't even need to add the stems because really when you look at a bouquet of flowers, you don't really see the stems. You see the leaves, you see the flowers. Um, if you want your vase to be clear, like the vase that I have, you could draw some of your stems down into there. Um, but I'm gonna actually color my vases. So your next step is to, using crayons or colored pencils, <clears throat> um, we're gonna color it in. And um, so I'll probably speed this part up, but in whatever way that you would like, go ahead and add color. You want to make sure that you're filling in all the white space. And if you have something that you want to leave white, so I wanna make this look like a daisy. I want those petals to stay white. I'm gonna actually use my white crayon and I'm going to color those puddles, <laughs> petals, not puddles, petals in. Nice and solid. We're going to be painting the background and the table. So don't worry about coloring that in. You want to just color in your flowers and your vase. And I know it's sort of hard to see when you're coloring with white, but if you lean your head a little bit, you can kind of see the shine of the crayon that you've colored. But what will happen is this wax is going to resist the paint. So even if you get close to your flower, the paint will not go onto your flower. It'll keep those petals nice and white since the wax is there to sort of <clears throat> build a barrier to keep the paint off of there. So make sure that you have all the white paper filled in. You wanna make sure that your colors go to the edge, that you don't have anything that looks sort of scribbly. Um, even this is a little bit lighter, but I went ahead and I started to go around the edges to really fill that in to make that barrier. Because I'm gonna show in a second, uh, we're gonna add paint to the outside and that will, that. Um, and we'll resist it. So I'm just using a set of watercolor paints. If you don't have watercolor paints, you can just color the background. That is absolutely fine. Um, if you used markers, you wanna be careful to use paint because the paint can smear the marker. But if you used crayon um, or, or even colored pencil, that should be fine. 
so you're going to choose a color to paint your background with. Um, you want to try, like I probably won't use yellow because I have a lot of yellow here. I don't want to camouflage it. So I think that I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use purple. So I'm just going to dip mine in purple. And then as you paint, see, watch, I can get right up close to this flower. I can even paint right over top of it. That white crayon that I colored with is protecting that part of the petal. So the white paint will go in there. Even on my vase, I colored in between with white. So even I can go right up close. Look, it's not sticking because the crayon, the wax is resisting the paint. See how when it goes over there, it just pushes it right back off. So that's a really fun experiment to do. So I don't have to worry about being neat and perfect and getting in all these tiny areas. I can just paint right in there. Boom, it's filled in. my background and again watercolor paint should be light and flowing if it feels sticky or stiff or hard like it's hard to brush around um, you can just add a little bit of water so a lot of times I don't even have to dip my paintbrush back in the paint I just have to get it wet again by putting some water on it okay so this purple yeah see it purple gets dark very easily so be careful you only need a little bit of purple yeah. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush out, and for the table, I'm going to use some blue. So again, same thing, and if, if you accidentally, let's see if I can, if, if it gets too dark, you can actually just, again, take a little bit of water and help spread it out. So hopefully, yeah, see how it beat it up right there? I can just wipe it. You can paint right over top of your name. And there you go, your floral still life. Beautiful.